what is the moment, okay? So, you know, in, in Buddhist thought, we are just an infinite number. It's not an infinite number. The, the exact number escapes me and it's irrelevant, but it's something like 900 million moments per day or whatever. But however that number was arrived, it's, it's kind of meaningless. But we are an infinite array of moments always arising. Okay, so, and what that means is here I am talking to you and in that one sentence, there's an infinite number of ways we could have compartmentalized that in fragments of time. You know, so I'm, I'm kind of wrestling with this idea of like, how can we quantify a moment and right that then and there, I'm automatically out of the idea of what a moment is because it's not quantifiable, it's not tangible. But I have an astronomy background, I've got a science background as well. And I'm wrestling with the idea if any, I'm just saying this very quickly, if any of you have, you know, if you're into astronomy, or maybe you've heard this before, the shortest measurable time in the universe is something called Planck time. And I'm wondering if there's not an overlap with those. I wouldn't doubt that there is. I wouldn't doubt that a moment and Planck time are the same, but that's for another conversation. Okay. So as soon as we are in that space of that moment, then the moments simultaneously both exist and is already gone and we're into the next moment. Okay. And the question here that, or the statement that Amanda made is to me, it's really beautiful as a way to sum that up because you're not catching the current moment because the current moment doesn't exist. It's already passed, right? So as soon as we realize that we are in that space of fluidity, as soon as we realize that we're in that kind of non-dualistic flow of energy, then we've already now attached to those moments that have already passed, you know, because the the moments that we were referring to have now passed. And so that is a figment of the past. And it's now something we are pulling forward with our practice. You know, Reiki is, of course, universal energy, right? And so if that energy is universal, which is, you know, as all of us are understanding that from a Reiki perspective, then perfect homogenous energy would have no differentiating characteristics. You know what I mean? Like the, the energy that we are a part of today is the same as the energy that we were a part of yesterday. It's the same as the energy tomorrow. There's no way to differentiate that. And a way that I try to explain that, at least something that makes sense to me, is imagine some of you are, are in New York City or on the East Coast of the United States uh, at the moment. And I'm here in France. Now, if I went down to the Atlantic Ocean and I picked up a, a cup of seawater and you picked up simultaneously a cup of seawater in Boston or whatever, and we poured those back in and then picked them back up, then we would be interacting with the exact same water because it's the same body. It's the same dynamic. It's the same molecule. So it becomes indistinguishable from each other, if that makes sense. It's a state in... You know, in physics, there's a state where there is where all of these things are functioning in unison. So there's no uh, definable difference in any state of matter. And I think that's what we're looking at here with this state of the moment. OK, now, as we dive into that moment. The way that I'm starting to look at it with our Reiki practice is in that simultaneous moment, if we could just somehow freeze the entire universe and see ourselves as one sliver of our entire existence, right? So a, literally an infinite number of planes that we stack together to make the story of me, of Bruce Taylor, or whatever, the story of all of you. If we could extract one of those planes out and just see that very small sliver, then what we would find is that sliver like this all of our past moments behind us and all of our expectation on our future moments in front of us, right? But at that particular moment, nothing exists, you know, because we are there. The past has, has already happened. So it's already here. So it's, it's in moments prior and the future has yet to happen. So it's in moments future. So we are just in the center. Our body of energy is just in the center of that space. And when I started to see it like that, you know, so you can imagine if your body's here, like you have a, a huge amount of the past streaming behind you, 
And in front of you, you have a huge amount of the future waiting to stream in front of you. However, at that moment, none of those two things exist. And this is a very common tenant in, in Buddhism. It's a common tenant in uh, meditation and you know, mindfulness practices that the future and the past no longer exist. And they're all simultaneously with you at that moment. 